Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. My name is Jonas, I'm your host, and I'm here with... T-N-T-D-I-N-O-M-I-G-H-T. Is that right? Is that how I'm supposed to do it? No. T guaranteed dynamite. It don't matter. It's the explosive one. It's your boy. It's the explosive one. I'm your boy. We're both here. What's up, Jonas? (laughs) Welcome to another episode. Look, man. (laughs) What, man? We need to innovate the intro. Let's innovate the intro. Okay. All right. Let's try something different. All right. On the next one. So (laughs) thank you so much for joining us today on the Crazy Town Podcast. You dismissed my ideas. (laughs) We're, we can't be in the middle of the episode and start a new Oh, intro. okay, so the president can spitball ideas on how to get rid of coronavirus, but I can't spitball <laughs> ideas on my forum to talk. I guess not. No, go ahead. You're fine. <laughs> Thank you for joining guess us. Guess we'll just use UV light. <laughs> yeah, we will. Drink bleach. Jesus. Sorry. So you can't, wow. I'm done. I'm done. Are you? All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today on uh, TNT Dynamite's Rant Fest. I'm giving them emotion, man. That's what they There's come There's a lot for. of emotion in this room right now. Uh, yeah, make sure you follow us on Spotify, iTunes, or if you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch our uh, video game videos, Crazy Town Media. So, or you can watch this guy on Twitch. You can watch him rant about the government. <laughs> it's your boy, TNT Dynamite. I'm on Twitch every morning at 9 a.m. Come hang out with me at TNT Dynamite underscore crazy town twitch.tv. Are you trying to are you trying to be me? It's your boy. <laughs> it's your boy, no, I'm Jonas. Try, I'm trying to be like every just like YouTuber. horrible YouTube Twitcher streamer. Yeah. Twitcher. I should be like, Shoot it's me. your boy Jonas. We should be. We can do that. We're wife beaters and just you say wife beater. Oh, yeah, we could... I, thought... I, I, thought, I thought you said be wife beaters. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Jonas, when are they gonna get wife beater the hell up out of here? Because it like it's a terrible term. And I, dude, and, and I still refer to them as wife. I think everybody does. Yeah, I think a lot of people still. But do. they're technically called a shirts, and they, that's a that's what? a terrible. I thought, I thought like it was a if, tank if, top. if you buy a pack of like from Hanes or Fruit Loom, they they're they're called a shirts. Because if you think about them, they kind of look like an A if you hold them by the two straps. I thought they were just tank tops. Isn't that just a tank top? No, but they're wife beaters, dude. I could imagine a fruit balloon put like <laughs> eight piece wife beater. <laughs> oh my god! White. <laughs> Eight pack, eight pack piece set, white wife beaters, <laughs> black <laughs> wife beaters. Oh my god, Jesus! <laughs> yeah, you know what, Jonas? It hasn't been done. Maybe we could do it. We could call them husband beaters too. Could... Make them for women. Mm. Call them, and we we could change the game. Mm, yeah, husband beaters, not wife wife beaters. It's not a bad idea. God, do you know how much flack we would get? But we should do it. It's what they're called. I didn't make them. Oh my god, we can make them with like the mustard stains already on them. Like, I mean, it's beautiful. Like and grease and mutter- mustard. <laughs> Two hundred dollars a pop. <laughs> get Kanye to wear one. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Oh, man. dude, designers. I like it. Um, you want to go first? Uh, I can. I don't care. No, you go first. Okay, cool. All right, all right. Uh, are you familiar with cryptocurrency? Yep, Jonas. Imagine <laughs> that. Living under a rock for a million years. <clears throat> there is a man. His name is mm. Alex Mazmej. Mm. This is actually a pretty current story, by the way. Ooh. It's M A S M E J. Well, it's current now, Jonas, but we do have a bit of a bad log. It's like a week. Okay. Yeah, man. He's 23 years old. He decided that. He was going to reinvent the crypto game. Ooh, innovation. Yeah, is better than invention, Jonas. He has decided to. He didn't. He did an ICO, initial coin it. offering. That's okay. like when they start a new crypto. Facts. He has decided to sell tokenized versions of himself. They're called the Alex Coin. Okay. Starks. Hey, fair or, I mean, dollar sign Alex is its code. Should we invest? I was thinking about it. Because it's, it's, I'll tell you why. Right. He raised $20,000 <clears> and um, he has 30 investors. I'm looking it up already. And uh, it ends up being about, a, a, right now they're worth about a, a, a cent a piece. Oh, yeah, I'm getting me some. <laughs> so basically, what, <laughs> right what, what this is going to do is 
he has agreed to, if you are a shareholder of Alex, he will give you a share of his income up to $100,000 for the next three years. You can vote on some of his life decisions. Oh, yeah, I need that. And uh, you can request that he promote you via his social media. Now, right now, he only has about 3,500 followers. But as this picks up, he could get a lot of followers. That could be some good advertising. Yeah. So you put like 100 bucks in, you, or uh, you put a dollar in, you get 100 Alex tokens. And then you can like have him promote our channel on his YouTube or on his social media. Yeah. Now, know. here's the here's the only thing. <clears throat> this is not a security, so he doesn't have to go through like the SEC or whatever. So essentially, he doesn't have to follow any of the terms that he has committed to. Mm. So the twenty thousand dollars that he collected is sitting on the blockchain. He could drain it out if he wants. No, he has no harm, no foul. Oh. He doesn't have to give you his money up to that. But what he said was that. Basically, by him not doing that would ruin everything. He, it's like that's his reputation's all he's got. So if he doesn't follow up with this, he will never be successful with what he wants to do. Because if he just runs with this money, no one will ever believe in him because he's not trustworthy. I mean, yeah, well, but right. yeah, yeah, exactly. And but give him a dollar for a hundred tokens, he can run with my dollar. <laughs> um, give him a thousand dollars. I doubt they'll ever be worth more than a cent. Um, but yeah, uh, so I mean, he's he's from like the UK. He's lived in Paris, San Francisco. He's been he's done like stuff with like crypto loan companies. He's not like a he's not like a dumb person. Oh well, no man, because I don't know how to get a cryptocurrency started, and apparently he went through all the steps to get it done. Yeah, and he did. He like they said he had some other businesses and stuff, and he like to the point where it's like we're reporting on it. So yeah, that's yeah, something. exactly. So I mean, it's um, I just thought that was like, dude, could you imagine if that's the new wave of like you invest? Like Bill Gates has Bill Bill Bucks, Bill Coins. Yeah, I mean, and you invest in Bill in Bill Gates as a person, Bezo wow. Coins, and then as they. As they make money or become more valuable, how, like how do you invest in a person? Is that like it's like that's sponsorship? Weird. It's weird. It's almost because, like sponsorship. Well, because here's the thing: say you have like a thousand Bill Bilbo coins, and he dies. What happens to your Bilbo coins well, when they you, die? Does you, all value go away, or do they? Do they? Because what you could do is like you could say a specific amount of my income goes to the investor fund, and then when I die. All that money gets distributed amongst my crypto owners to the percentage that they owned my body. I would assume that it would entitle – I would think – I mean, I like that idea. Don't get me wrong. But I would think that maybe you would get a portion of his estate. But it would all have to be set up in like what they – because like you could set it up. Like I could set up a coin of myself and say 20% of my earnings forever will go into this into this trust. And when I die, it all – or. Oh, 20% of my, all my, what you could, you could set up however the hell you want, really. 20% of everything that is contributed to you goes into that fund. Right. The more From people, this moment forward or the whatever. Moment, the more people who contribute to you, the more that 20% builds up and then you distribute that, but that's not a good investment. See, but it, I guess it would have to be, and you would have to add something to it. Yeah, I like the idea. I feel like that may be but something then, like, that but, we need to look but at. Then, but, then the, uh, but then the thing comes is like, if you're so valuable, then will your investors try to kill you so they get your money? Wow. Because if you have a million people invested in you and they know if you die, they all get like yeah. $100,000, like, yeah. then are you at risk of someone murdering you just for a hundred grand? So everyone gets yeah, that's a good point, man. And you, and you know damn well that there's like people out there trying to take down other business every day. Oh, yeah, dude, and if you and like imagine Lobbyists. if you just just say like say for example this was a thing a long time ago and you put a hundred dollars in Bill Gates before Windows was ever invented. Yeah. So right now your Bill Bucks are worth. If he died, you would be a millionaire. Yeah. So it's like so you you jump in on the like the ground floor before this kid enters college or something, and then he turns into this mogul. Mm. So you can invest in people like at a young age, and then if they. <laughs> And then if they become rich, you get a chunk of their money. But then, like, I think you're just talking about parenting at this point. No, but the parent, the parents, <laughs> sure that's dude, investing in young. You have a baby. The parents uh, oh. have an ICO on the baby. What? <laughs> and the risk, and you have the risk of you donate to the fund. What the 
and then, I'm not making my newborn sign a contract. And then, <laughs> and then, like you take a gamble, you throw a hundred bucks at him, and then maybe gambling. that kid becomes the next Bill Gates. Maybe he becomes a junkie in an alley. We're gambling on infants now. <laughs> I think it's kind of fucked up the way that this country is just basically just built on like money and greed, man. It's, oh, dude, it, it, it is. It, a thousand it is it's well, disgusting. I mean, the prime example is like our country was getting overwhelmed by a virus. Yeah. And they were like, how can we get to keep the stock market up? Yeah. That was the concern. Yeah. Not how do we save everybody's life? How do we not let all the people who invest in the stock market oh, lose yeah. their money? Life definitely has a price on it, fam. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Well, I was reading, I was reading an article, um, and it and it make it made sense, but the but like the way it was went about was bad because like by saving the stock market, you in turn save people because if the stock market crashes too far and the economy goes to shit, yeah. everybody suffers long term. Yep. But if everybody dies, then there's no economy to care. I don't think everybody's well, well, right. going to die. But, but, but if you have large amounts of death, yeah. that's going to affect the, the economy as well. It's going to affect the economy because the funds have to go into funerals. The, phone ha the, the funds that the people could be putting into the con economy goes into like medical right. treatment. It goes into other things other than buying a new car, or going on a cruise, right. flying airplanes, but, putting it in the bank. None of that's going to happen. So like the principle behind what they were trying to do, I understand. It's just the the nomenclature that they use to yeah. stress it. Yeah. Like when you had like the Texas governor say something like, Sometimes you just got to risk your life. I'd risk my life for the economy. Like, no, mm. no, you can't say <laughs> shit like that. And I honestly, I, I kind of think that's just like the difference between a, a Democrat and a Republican. And it's not even like the lines are kind of blurred because it's not that Republicans just do not care about people or poor people or the state of the common everyday man. Right. They just they value the economy a little bit more. To the point where they're going to prioritize it versus Democrats who at least give the illusion that they care more about the common man and the our, people our are state of being on just on the day to day. Compared, it's like yeah. It's I like mean, one, but it's bullshit too. That's why I say the lines are really a lot closer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's just but about like what appearance you want to use to try to garner the people's trust. That's what it is. It really what is. perception do you want right. to show them? Yeah, do you want to do you want to be perceived as someone who wants to save the economy at all costs or yeah. someone who wants to save humanity at all costs? Yeah. And like cuz I guarantee you like the, the Democrats are just as concerned, but they don't say it that way. It's ha it's perception. Yeah, it's definitely perception. Like the, like the Republicans have no problem saying we want to save the economy. But we'll never say we want to save the people, and the, yeah. and the the Democrats will be like, we gotta save the people, but really they want to save the economy too. Yeah, I mean, we we say we're gonna discuss like some of the long term changes that are gonna occur with this, oh. and since we're already on this segue, yeah, contactless delivery is the wave of the future. Dude, there's already McDonald's right now where they have contactless drive-through service. Jones. Where you just go up, swipe your card, go to the next window, it opens your bag sitting there, you grab it, and you. It's already happening. But man. do you think about it? Why do we need all those people at the windows? Where like, why we... can't, why can't you, why can't the people just work inside and they literally like once you pay at one window, then they walk your order and set it down. The window opens, you grab your order, and you drive off. Like, why is that? Why do you need a specific person to run the window? All right. Now, that was the most millennial thing I've ever heard you say, and I'm proud right now. <laughs> Think in a boomer term, Jonas. Think in a boomer term. Jobs. Not only jobs, but we're just disconnecting ourselves from everybody. And, that, and I could see how that could be problematic because the less contact that we have with other individuals, even in those like... We take those those things for granted, like just saying hi to the and her saying you have a nice day or whatever. Right, right, right. Versus hearing it through a speaker. Right. <laughs> have a nice day, human. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I used to like it when I would get like DoorDash or Grubhub or whatever, and they deliver it to the door, and it was a hot chick. I'd be like, oh, okay, I got to see a person. Right, right. I see right. another individual for five seconds. Now I see them walking away, <laughs> and getting into their Nissan Altima, and yeah. then driving away. Yeah. But it is so it's it, I feel like it's going to continue. Oh yeah. Oh well, yeah, dude. Why uh like I went and picked up Chinese food yesterday and like I went to the restaurant and like they had their door and they just had a table at the door. You walked up. They were at their counter oh, like 20 feet from the door and they said, "What's your phone number or your name?" Gave it to them. They they 
they walked up, they grabbed your card, walked back, ran it, brought your food back, set it down with the receipt in your card. You signed it and then put it on your their little like uh, spike tab thing yeah. and grabbed your food and walked away. And if your food wasn't ready, you walked down to the next door, which had another table, and everyone just waited over there. And they walked up, put your food down and said like, you know, zero, two, th three, zero. And you walk up, grab your thing and walk away. I feel like this is just, it's going to keep going, man. Uh, well, I th well, and I think the longer that this goes on, the more the more that they're going to realize. For example, it's like the company I work for, uh, I, I, I support people who are out in the field doing their work. Um, they're all now working from home remotely and in like they're, they're, they figured out a process that kind of lets them do their job without physically having to go to the place without giving away too much info about what I do or what industry I'm in. Well, in the meantime, the company isn't paying for all their gas to drive around. The company's not paying for all the maintenance on all their vehicles that they're driving around and getting in accidents and all that sort of stuff when they're out. And they're, I'm sure the efficiency probably isn't the same, but it can't be that much lower. So like when they are, when all of a sudden this is over and they're like, okay, you guys can all go back to work. They're like, wait, we're just going to call and crew all this extra cost again when we were doing it pretty efficiently. So then I was like, so are they going to be like, well, now these people go out in the field Monday and Friday it's, to wrap up, start their week and wrap up their week and they stay home in the middle of the week. It's definitely going to change the way that some people even do their jobs. These businesses can save so much money if they don't invest so much money into these brick and mortar, like, uh, just like hub stations and they can just have these people work from home or like how they change the way that certain people that you work with are uh, yeah. getting their job done because it's the efficiency versus cost effective because right. that's how corporations right. have to if think. You lose, if you lose 10% efficiency and you're saving 40% cost. Keep it going. Right. <laughs> Keep it yeah, going. Exactly. We'll take dude. that hit. It's like, it's, we'll, to work harder. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's all it takes. Yeah, dude. Uh, and but like, it, yeah, I don't know, man. It, I think it's it is a little crazy that you have that feeling of just like a little bit when somebody gets a little too close to you. And because like three months ago it was like let's go to a place and cram in and exactly. sweat on each other exactly <laughs> like go to a concert and you're sweating on everybody and you know, things are not going to go back to normal normal until i think a, a year. year after and i think a year after we're okay not a year from now oh no yeah it's gonna like, be like a year after it's just like none because we still need to make sure that the shit's not coming back and there's already a good chance that it yeah, might. Yeah, well, the thing that, uh, that I think is, yeah, because like the longer this goes, it becomes the new normal. Yeah. Then to change the normal again, people hate change, dude. People yeah. hated this at first, but now they're starting to get used to it. If this goes on for another three months. <laughs> Except for the protest. It's, well, right. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be more of a habit, but I'll tell you, dude, to be completely fucking honest with you, like say all of a sudden they were like, everything's cool tomorrow. Everything, boom, completely back to normal. Forget everything. You, I'm not going I'm not there. going anywhere, dude. I'm not. No, it's, no. That's what I'm saying. It's like a lot of people won't. I, I saw some reports online where they'd done surveys and like, they were like 70% of Americans say, They'll take their time getting back to yeah. doing stuff. Yo, and that, and you know why? Because they're little, they, they're too quick with it. In some of these states, man, there's a guy, uh, one of the public officials in Florida that is wearing a Grim Reaper costume on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Just to remind people of like, you are doing something dangerous. You could die. Oh wow! But you just feel like you're you're good. Well, and, and when here's the thing, I think it's gonna get real scary, especially like here in Texas. It's about to get real nice outside. It's like the weather is like on the precipice of turning into like summer. Yeah. And people are going to be like, I want to go. I want to swim. I want to go to the park. I want to mm. get on the lake. I want to do X, Y, Z. I want to go to concerts. I work nights. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, but the thing is <laughs> like, you. yeah, it's going to take because like, I, dude, and, it, and at this point, since we're already what? Six weeks on lockdown, not to mention another like couple weeks of like partial like mm. maybe you want to stay home mm. dude it like i don't think it's going to be anywhere near like i don't think every business will be open until probably closer to the fall because it's, it's going to be, be a such a slow release it's going to be a while right and dude like sports like no nobody's going to a sporting event or a concert this year no no like no. they may have sports but there ain't going to be any fans nope that means like <laughs> entertainers musicians aren't making any money movies aren't getting seen so movies aren't getting made either yeah, they're, they're not getting made uh, 
video games. I heard that all of the the movie revenue for this quarter was gotten from one drive-in theater in Florida because most of all of them were closed. Yeah, I mean drive-ins. I did read an article at drive-ins because like, people are you can stay in your car and keep your windows up and drive-ins you can go. Are, yeah, I would comeback. go to a drive-in because I want to do anything right now. Like I'm, I'd be like, can I go watch a movie in my car, please? You can go out and protest. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you could, dude. I could. You're you right. Could. But yeah, man. All right. We, well, that, that, that kind of goes that, into my story. Is that quick? Because we ran out of time. I mean, how long we got? Uh, a couple minutes. Yeah. It's okay if it goes long. I don't know. Yeah, it's fine. All right. Okay. I just want to talk about Louisiana pastor Tony Spell. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, I think that's the. I think that is the guy I was talking about. All right. Well, he got arrested for holding gatherings of a thousand plus people. Right. For church services. Yes, after they were like, don't do this. Well, this was the first time. Then he compl- he uh, said that COVID-19 was politically motivated. Yes. And he gave out anointed handkerchiefs that he said would keep the people safe while they were attending his service. Anointed handkerchiefs. You know, this, is a, this is a thing that you ain't familiar with. Because you've never been into, into Jesus stuff. But I made it, I, when I was younger, I made it a point to gather all the anointed items that I could from all of these televangelists that I possibly could. Yeah. I had miracle water, uh, a, a prayer apron, anointed handkerchiefs, and it was all free. Wait, what is, what is that? It's, it's like blessed stuff it's from like the church? A, it's kind of like a talisman. <laughs> okay. To be 100% all right. honest, it's a talisman. As long as you believe it has magical powers, it does. And and for Easter, he had uh, 2,000 plus people show up to his Easter uh, service. And that was after he was arrested the first time. Um, he also is the same pastor that was telling people of his congregation to donate their $12,000, $1,200 stimulus checks oh, to, his. to him. But his own church did not even apply for the payroll protection plan, which is like, why don't you just get the money from the government, <laughs> but you want to take it from the P? A little fucked up. Right. Well, he just recently got arrested again because he got into a church bus and attempted to run over a protester that had been out there um, outside of his church, basically saying that it was a, a COVID Petri dish and uh, you can't hit people with cars. You cannot. So he is currently. <laughs> is oh, currently, I have I have more information on this guy. Do you? What else? This is the man to? I was talking about. It is the same guy. He had him and his wife have tested positive for coronavirus, and now, now they have it. Yeah, because and then also, um, his lawyer has it and is hospitalized, and a patron of his church has I was, died I was from just it. Going to say that too, and at least one person from his church died from it. Yes. So he not only did he get it. He's giving it to people because he has it. Mm-hmm. And they said he I read the article last night that's what's high. He said that they're not going to seek medical treatment because Jesus is their medicine man or something yeah, like that. Okay. And so then they're like they're, they're not good. going anywhere and then people in the comments were like he can't go anywhere cuz he's on fucking house arrest. Yeah. It's not because he's not going anywhere. Dude, the list of accomplishments by this idiot. <laughs> accomplishments the list of accomplishments man and i've seen a a couple other just like creepy televangelists man who is just like i don't don't understand how people follow these people honestly or like yeah it's like you're in it's like they're supposed to be there to like support and like help help people and and you're like telling people to give their stimulus checks to the church and you're still holding services and like it's like and it's purely greed because they hold service because they make money at service oh yeah it's not about getting people closer to the lord yeah, and, and it, it, it it blurs those lines of like, do you prioritize getting that money from the people, or do you really are you really out here trying to save lives and be a philanthropist? Because if you are if you are a true pastor, you should be telling people to stay home and doing exactly. virtual sermons if you want to still preach. And but that you you already know if they started doing virtual sermons, he's going to be preaching to nobody. Yeah, now, there I mean, are some there are some pastors that I know for sure. Uh, T D Jakes for sure. He does virtual sermons, 
and he has a big turnout, but he has a big following as right. well. Right. Well, it'd be the same as like watching the those like was it the those people that do have the TV shows, the Sunday televangelists, and they have like shows where they they broadcast from their church and you stuff. Got Joyce Myers, Creflo Dollar, TD Jakes. Who you want me to keep going? The, is the Seven Hundred <laughs> Club a sermon or is that just a religious? Seven Hundred Club is like the Fox News of Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> it literally is. Is that what that is? It okay. is so much the Fox News of, of television. It's like the extreme right of the lord yes 100 percent. they're like today susan went to the store and she didn't wear a bra tomorrow <laughs> satan is coming up and pulling her to hell no i mean to the fact where they actually tell you vote for trump on 700 oh wow <laughs> you're a good christian if you yeah oh my god that's like it's like the guilt the guilt sermons dude it's crazy man but christians come in all flavors dude oh yeah, absolutely and and i don't want people to take any aggression towards the idea of faith the idea of faith is pure but people perverted and just like everything man tory spells getting his just due and i you know i hope that the the other people they reap what they sow. i as don't well. wish ill will on anyone but i hope he learns his lesson from what happened yeah that's all you know whatever that lesson is i hope he learns his lesson you get what you deserve right karma's a bitch yep yep exactly <laughs> uh so but anyways we went a little long with it's all good that is all the time we have for today's episode Please make sure to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel under Crazy Town Media. Uh, if you've already done that, uh, you can go to Spotify, iTunes. You can listen to the audio-only versions of this podcast. Not sure where you're listening to it today. You can also follow my boy, TNT. TNT Dynamite on Twitch <laughs> every every morning at 9 o'clock. Come and hang out with your boy, TNT Dynamite underscore Crazy Town Twitch.tv. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Well... We'll catch you on the next one. For Jonas, TNT Dynamite. We are out. Yeah.